Okay, uh, so I'm going to talk about um, our company that we founded, our project. Um, so what the Game Science Center is and who are the people behind it. Um, and as soon as we have... And there we are. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, that works. Good. You just... Uh, just the yeah. arrow keys. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So since I'm... Uh, oh, actually, small disclaimer first. So I'm um, a management guy. I'm a project manager. So uh, I don't do fancy graphics. Um, our creative guy uh, is probably embarrassed <coughs> seeing the presentation. But since he didn't want to stand <coughs> up here and talk, uh, he has to deal with it that I'm kicking it old school. So since I'm kicking it old school, uh, we're going to do the, the overview bit. So first I'm going to talk about uh, who we are. Um, just two of us, so it's going to be short. Um, what the Game Science Center is, um, <coughs> what kind of exhibits we already have, um, and where we're going with this, and then, uh, well, we'll have the end and some questions. So, um, the Game Science Center is two people. So that's Cyril Etta. Nope, you have, to, you have to stand up. I'm making you do that. Um, He's a game designer, and me, Kai Kellinghusen, I'm uh, a project manager, like I said. We met in 2005 uh, at the Games Academy, and we've been working together ever since. Uh, we both started at Spellbound Entertainment uh, in 2007. Uh, Cyril worked there for three and a half years, and I worked for four and a half years at that company until they turned the lights off. They went bankrupt last year. Um, and we did a number of projects together. Our first project together was Project Barco, which was a student project. Um, then we worked on Arcania Gothic 4, sort of kind of triple A. Um, and uh, Ravensteel, some people might know the name because it came through Kickstarter with Black Forest Games. Uh, it's, it's an idea that's been going around the company, Spellbound, for, for I think 10 years now. Uh, so finally they, uh, they came out and, and did something with it. Sadly, the Kickstarter failed. And uh, Cyril worked on another AAA project, which was an actual AAA project at Spellbound, which sadly got cancelled. Uh, and then he went on back to Berlin, do some freelance work um, in game design and web design. I worked on an entertainment game uh, for Spellbound for um, uh, Volkswagen called Gatska. And I worked on the internal project uh, prototype for Project Gianna, which later went on to Kickstarter as well. Um, Schmitty over there, an old colleague of ours, uh, he actually championed the project when it came to Kickstarter and kind of was one of the driving forces behind it. Um, so, what is the Game Science Center? I think uh, I kind of have to start with the name because it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, the name uh, means a lot to us because kind of we take the little different bits. Game for us is fun, engagement, interactivity, science, um, discovery, new stuff. Um, science Center is actually a standing, um, a standing name for, a, for an interactive science museum. And Center was important to us also because it means a physical, physical location. I think when we started writing business plans, people were always assuming this is kind of online. You go on a website and check something out. Not the case. And Berlin, well, it's Cyril's spiritual home. Um, and uh, it's also very edgy, creative. I mean. You're a testament to that. Um, and uh, I found out later in doing research, it's the third biggest tourist destination in Europe. Um, so what it is that we do, um, it's a crazy idea that kind of came out of our Cyril and my shared obsession with Kickstarter, throwing money at random strangers. Um, <laughs> initially, it was meant to be kind of a, um, a showroom um, to show off like stuff that, that comes through Kickstarter that, that um, normal people don't get to see, but uh, Cyril being an early adopter and me being obsessed with Kickstarter, uh, we see a lot of um, stuff like the Rift um, or other projects that didn't go exactly through Kickstarter, like the Leap or um, the Mayo, which is coming later next or early next year. Um, and we just thought these things were awesome and people should see them, uh, so we wanted to, to showcase them. Um, we later expanded this concept when, when we continued working on this uh, to include other more interactive stuff. So basically we ended up with a definition of we want to have an interactive space where you can basically just put anything that has cool interactions um, and um, showcase it to um, gamers, technology freaks and normal people. 
Um, and once again, why Berlin? Um, because it just seemed like the exactly the place where this might actually work. Um, not sure if it would work anywhere else. I don't think it would work in Hamburg or Munich, but uh, Berlin seemed like the place to be. Um, but I think the best way to explain what we do is by talking about the, the exhibits or the, the, the projects that we've already talked to that agreed uh, to be uh, part of the Game Science Center. And the first one um, was a Kickstarter project, uh, Sound Self by Robin Arnott. He's a, an audio designer, I think, by trade. Um, and, okay, I, I have to read this off the page because I can never remember it. Uh, he explained it as such. Explore a hypnotic world of light and sound that feels like it's emerging directly from your body. Um, I think in a YouTube video he said he, he got this idea when he had a, a kind of an acid trip at, at Burning Man. Um, and he was sitting in, in, in at a dome with lots of visualization around him. Uh, so the concept is you, you, you wear a mic and you kind of chant into the mic. It's like, oh, oh, oh kind of like um, meditating. And that creates this, uh, this kind of funky visualization and uh, a, a, background, a background sound. Uh, we've tried it, it's kind of, it's kind of trippy and strange. Um, and he added Rift support and he's uh, using also 3D projectors. Uh, and he's using, actually he's, he's at Burning Man right now doing an installation with SoundSelf. Um, and uh, we just thought this is so freaky, uh, people have to see it. Um, and, and uh, Robin was just uh, excited and was on board right away. And we just wanted to add the, the sub-pack as well. Does anyone here know what the sub-pack is? Oh, there's actually one person other than Cyril. I think uh, he actually was announced for somebody called Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, actually, well, Lorenzo managed to get the word out. OK, I, I convinced Cyril to, to bring it because he's been, he's been uh, uh, he's been crazy about the sub pack since <coughs> since we got it. Uh, basically, it's a bass. Um, you plug it into you plug your phone or your whatever your music comes out of. You plug your music into that thing. You plug your headphones in, and you get the bass line uh, directly in your back. It's an, it's like a. Um, have you ever sat in the back of a car that has like a, a, a bass roll in the, in the in the trunk, and um, they turn up the bass? That's kind of what it, what it feels like, just better. Um, so it's uh, we we try it. It's really awesome when you when you when you hook it up to a PC and you're you're playing your regular games and then you have the baseline of the sound effects uh, like uh, reverberating in your back. It's awesome, cool immersive, immersive experience. So we thought, okay, if we can add this to to exhibits, this is this is going to kick ass. Um, so the next one um, is uh, a French project. Uh, two French designers, uh, Jonathan Da Costa and uh, Florence Rampin. I'm assuming that's how she's pronounced. Um, they uh, wanted to do a, a twist on the, on the classic Pong. Um, it's basically they're using Kinect, uh, they're, they're putting a, a screen um, horizontally and uh, Kinect on top and you kind of, your hand hovers above the paddle, um, controlling, uh, controlling the game. And they also added uh, these cups, which are interactive elements that you can kind of throw on the table to kind of change up, uh, change up the game. And it's uh, had a really cool feel to it and it had a really cool uh, visual style that they brought to it, so we thought this is this is something fun that that we also want to show. Um, Luna Flight um, is, I think, one of the one of the flagship indie projects that that uh, uses uh, Oculus Rift. Um, the Rift people actually talked to Sean Edwards, uh, who's out in Australia. Um, they met at PAX Oz, um two months ago or something, and um, they're thinking about hooking up and doing something together. So you have a you're sitting in a space capsule and you're flying across the surface of the moon. Um, and when I tried it, especially combining it with the sub pack, it's, I think, the most immersive Rift experience that I've, I've had so far. And I'm assuming that everybody here knows what the Rift is. Yeah. Okay, the Rift is the, the VR headset that's, uh, the, um, that they did the VR jam about. So this virtual reality headset, it's, it's, it's like a screen in front of your eyes. And when you turn your head, the camera in the game turns. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome and this uh, basically you're sitting in the capsule and you, you're looking around he create a really cool atmosphere with radio chatter and static and all that kind of stuff so it, it feels it feels really immersive I think um, I, I was kind of blown away when I saw it um, Nagual dance okay this this is this is gonna sound this is gonna sound a little bit weird so they use connect to create music through dancing so it's kind of like dance central just in reverse so you start dancing and then you have music there's no music to start with, and then you have to start dancing. It's, 
it's really strange. I didn't think it was going to work, but when I tried it, it's like, it's awesome. Um, no, it's a it's a, a a techno DJ and a composer got together and they really created something cool. So basically, as soon as you start dancing, you feel like you're drunk in a club and you're actually you're actually in tune with the beat, which doesn't happen to me very often. I think it does, but it probably doesn't. Um, so it's a it's a really it's a really cool fun experience. Um, then we have uh, Licht. This is the first project that uses the Leap Motion Controller, which is kind of like a sensor that you put in your desk and uh, in an area about this big, uh, it can sense your hand movements and uh, you can kind of use your PC without touching it. Uh, yeah, uh, some of the games have been, well, some of the, the applications that we've seen have been subpar, uh, and uh, Licht is definitely one of the coolest ones that we've seen uh, in terms of the controls. Um, and he also added, added Rift support, and uh, I think we'll probably throw in the sub pack as well. Um, basically, in this game, you guide a ball of light through dark mazes. Um, and um, I think it's a really cool aesthetic for, for, an, uh, for an indie game, um, and it has a really cool feel to it. And the guy is really nice. Um, and then we have Interactive Comics. Uh, so this is the studio that I talked to last year, actually, they wanted to give me, well, they, they wanted to get me to, to uh, work with them, and we came back this year, talked to him, because we knew he had some interactive stuff in the, uh, in the pipeline. And um, basically what he wants to do is get kind of like, you know, the, the, the old adventure books where you choose what happens next. This is the kind of stuff that he wants to do with, with his comic books. And um, since our main focus is interactivity, not necessarily interactivity in the, the sort of the massive uh, uh, kind of Call of Duty kind of moment sense, but also in any kind of sense, we thought this is cool. And he also told us he has some cool stuff coming next year. Uh, which we can't really talk about because it's not our surprise to spoil, um, but it should be should be pretty awesome. And the last one is actually a connection we made through Lorenzo, uh, Mario von Rickenbach. He designed a game uh, for the, the experimental gameplay five con five button competition. Yeah, um, it's a rocket. It has five thrusters, and uh, he created uh, five foot pedal controllers. And each one um, controls one of the thrusters. And you kind of have to fly the rocket through a level, land it in somewhere, and then you win the level. So you either have to be extremely quick on your feet, or you need more than one person. And once you have more than one person, I think it, well, it turns into uh, a really nice exercise in either communication or cooperation or complete havoc. Um, <laughs> and we just like the fact that, that he has his own like uh, unique controller setup, a different way of interacting with the machine. Uh, which is always cool. So those are the ones that are confirmed so far. We're still talking to more people, um, like Crytek about the CryEngine. I mean, it's state-of-the-art visuals. Um, Razer, they have the, the Hydra, um, basically <coughs> controller like the, the Wii nunchucks, um, just that they know where they actually are uh, in, in, in space. Uh, so a lot of people have played around with them for stuff like um, the <coughs> holodeck uh, or this kind of... This kind of uh, application. Then there's uh, Proximity by Iosono. It's a sound setup that actually can place uh, sounds in a room. So it can basically, if you tell it, okay, place a sound two meters over there, two meters over there, two meters behind you, and they can do that. Um, very cool. We still want to check it out. Uh, would be awesome if we could combine this with other, like virtual reality or, or other kind of, kind of setups. Uh, ben Desk is a university project. Um, which is a curved surface, touch, multi-touch surface, um, which we thought was kind of cool. Um, and we're talking to them tomorrow. Uh, Panoramical, another audio-based uh, project. Um, they have 16, I think it's 16 knobs you turn to uh, adjust or change the music, and it also change the landscape. landscape. Uh, New Year Eye Charm, another Kickstarter thing. They do eye tracking, uh, Mayo, um, uh, measures muscle impulses to uh, translate that to the computer input, which also quite awesome. Uh, reactable, um, yeah, it's a table, basically you put blocks down on the table and depending on where you position them, how you turn them, uh, you can experiment with different things. I think mostly they're using it for music. And <coughs> we're looking for a closer cooperation with Oculus VR. We'll talk to them at Gamescom. Uh, and um, so where are we going right now? the highest priority is getting this off the ground. 
Mm. For that, we're looking for more exhibits. Um, our goal is 10 to 15. We've still, um, like you said, uh, like you saw, we have uh, another people, some people we need to talk to. So, uh, we're looking for the right location, and as always, finding more money. And in the future, um, we want to build a community that's also that's visitors, supporters, um, exhibitors, developers. Uh, basically, it's like staying in touch with people that that. Uh, um, show stuff at our, uh, at our space uh, and seeing what they kind of do next and maybe if there's a, co a cooperation that comes out of the different exhibits. Um, building a small team so we can experiment ourselves, uh, combine different technologies, combine the Rift with Kinect, combine the Rift with Leap, combine all three um, and, and kind of see what happens. And um, spread the word. And this is the end, you're almost free. Um, that's the end of the talk, that's just the beginning for us. Um, and, um, the, well, time to be shameless. Uh, follow us on Twitter, check our website, like us on Facebook. Um, any kind of support, any extended reach is, is always going to be helpful for uh, convincing people that people like this idea and actually want, this, want to see this happen. And now I'm done. If anyone has any questions, I'm not sure if we have time. I don't know. Lorenzo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, you had a uh, lot of nice sketches in there. I would like also to ask, how are you standing with actually uh, going to gaming in scientific discovery, since the science were in there as well? I didn't quite understand the question. So there are games that are actually used to ground source, ground source scientific problems. Okay. So if you want to focus on them as well, or if it goes, because it's not that easily exhibitable. Um, I think that's the key, that's the key point. I mean, the, the the whole point is trying to use um, different technologies to actually show like um, people that are not not so up on the on the technology news what is actually possible with the uh, with <coughs> technology today. Um, I wouldn't exclude them. Um, but it, it really depends on how the, how the project is set up. I mean, we want to start working closely with uh, um, different institutions like universities, people like the Games Academy or the School for Games, and see kind of what kind of projects come out of there. Um, but even for, also for them, we're uh, not saying, okay, any Games Academy project we're going to pick up, uh, because it has to have also some kind of a unique interaction or a different take on, on how to interact. So it's it's always it's somewhere it's somewhere in the middle. Um, could be an option, but doesn't necessarily have to be. But we're always interesting to hear it. Are you considering doing something like in a space and just like for a weekend or something like this, like to get it to see if this is gonna like something people are interested in? Like you know what I mean? Instead of like waiting for like the big space and like all that money to do it like no. as a test or something? Um, yes. Uh, we've thought about different variations for this. Uh, one basically doing this like a, a showcase for, for example, investors because it's, it's really hard to actually explain this. I think people have to try it. Uh, on the note of trying it, um, like I said, Cyril brought this up back. It sounds weird, but uh, people should, should try it out. Um, Yes, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how we could uh, we could do that. Uh, one thing is we still have to we still have to get our hands on on enough hardware to actually show the project. So, for example, right now we have two two rifts. I mean, basically, if the community is, is cool, maybe we can scrounge some more from from different places. Um, but it really depends on whether we can get our hands on on the hardware. So far, we've been managing with our own savings, uh, but um, those might not be enough to get us the. Uh, to buy us the hardware that we would need for this kind of showcase, but it's uh, it would be a cool option. Maybe you can just borrow it for a weekend and then do it like a pop-up shop type. Yeah, yeah, we're we're kind of uh, um, we're embarrassed to ask about that kind of thing. Um, I think there's there's people like for example we were good friends with the with the people at Games Academy or School for Games. I think we could ask them if we could borrow their hardware for the weekend. Um, but uh, so far, we've been kind of afraid to ask. You should, like, you know, get over that fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you laugh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yep. Uh, I, uh, I wonder what the motivation is. So why do you do that? What, what do you have already? Um, actually, that's that's a that's a two part thing. Um, see, Cyril and I we're kind of we're kind of different. He's the creative one. I'm the the organized one. If you check our website, it's actually what I say about us. Um, uh, I I learned at, at Spellbound that while I kind of dream of doing like the the big blockbuster production, spongy style. Um, I realized that that's not where I want to be. I want to. I want to have a. Uh, the most fun I had was with a small team. I think we were four people crammed into a tiny office, um, and that was the most fun I had. Uh, so I wanted to challenge myself to start uh, building a small team of my own, uh, kind of picking my own guys and kind of growing it. And uh, for Cyril, I think it's more the. Um, I mean, he might be able to answer that himself, but uh, I don't think he wants to. Um, it's it's more the creative side. Like uh, with this with this setup, when we actually do get to uh, design something ourselves, for one side, for one, he also says that the, um, he always says that that the design of the, um, the exhibition space is kind of a, a level design challenge, kind of a game in itself, a game consisting of smaller games. Um, and uh, on the other hand, when we actually do get to that point where we can create our own exhibits. It's uh, we can do stuff that, that n nobody else can when they're making commercial games, because nobody's going to create a game, for example, where you combine the Rift and the Kinect to do kind of like a a, a virtual uh, fear of heights thing. Like we thought of one thing where you put like a board down on the ground, like a thick piece of wood. You can feel the edges through your shoe when you put the Rift on. It's like a beam going across a canyon. Um, and all you all you can do in this in this game game uh, you walk like four or five meters forward. Nobody's going to build a game for this, but yeah. we still think. It exists. It exists. But but still but still, <laughs> you're actually building a game for this. No, 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 it exists. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, we saw we saw something. Somebody did uh, something something similar for. I keep forgetting the name. The Ignition, yeah. Uh, they had an open house, that kind of thing. But this is this is the kind of stuff that you can't. You, we can limit our, our, our situation. We can kind of tailor the space uh, to do interactions or, or do things that that regular games can't. Uh, and that's also what's what's kind of what's kind of awesome. Good. So if you have any more, we're we'll running a bit short of time. So okay. uh, thank you.